this is uh, this is Brother West coming to you. Uh, I've been on all day today, um, taking it easy, relaxing, and just um, uh, meditating, and uh, allowing God to just speak to my heart. But that this one one thing I did did want to one topic that I did want to uh, briefly just highlight and just basically dissect and and, and, and dissect. The, the issue and dissect the problem and 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 and, 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 and express the answer. I want to dissect the problem, but also uh, show or reveal the answer. And the answer is Christ. The answer is God. God is the answer to any condition, any sickness, anything that we find ourselves in that we need help. Our answer is God. Our answer is is Christ. And, 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 and one of the things that God, the Bible says, the Bible says that in Exodus 20 and 4, it says that, that we should not have any image, idol, or a uh, graven image before God. You know, those are things that God hates because uh, God is a jealous God. And uh, one of the things, one of the mistakes in, as people that we make, and I, I'm a victim of it myself, is and, and, and is, is, the, is a fact of, making something an idol. In other words, you know, where there's a custom or a tradition. And oftentimes we, we get caught up into the, to the custom and the tradition instead of understanding the spirit of the thing. And that was one of the things that Jesus was had been trying to teach uh, the Pharisees and all of that. Even on the Sabbath, when someone needed to be healed, he would say, should I not, should I allow this person to die, not heal on the Sabbath? Just because of the Sabbath, and so um, it is a matter of the Bible says that the Lord will let a killer, but it's the spirit that makes a, uh, makes alive. One of the things, and we'll get to my point, one of the things that destroy most relationships, one of the things that destroy uh, most marriages, especially, 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 especially in the church, is when the couple, they, they lose sight of who they are. When the couple lose a sight of me and you. See, because when we got together, it was me and you. And what we created was me and you. The communication, the conversation. And, and what happens oftentimes, and it happens in relationships, when, when you get older and you grow in a relationship, when you start to have kids and you just grow, you have a tendency to get caught up into the, into the current of life, get caught up into the things of life, and then what happened, you begin to drift yourself apart in the sense of everybody have a certain role. And so y'all, 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 it's almost like you become just partners. You become like partners and, well, now you do this and I do that and it's your time, uh, this time. And then when I get off, you get this and, and you do that. And, and, it's, and it's almost like the two, the two per people that once fell in love, that once loved each other, now you're, now you're partners. Now your business partners, where there's no, there's no, there's no feelings, there's no emotions, just an assignment. Well, now I know I got to do this because this is my job. Well, I know I got to do this because that's my job. Oh, I, I know I'm, I'm a husband, and so and my husband, I got to do this. Oh, now I'm a wife, and so the right wife is role is to do that. And so a lot of times, in saying that, a lot of times, we make idols. We make idols out of the position, the position of a, of a wife, the position of a husband the position and we get caught so caught up into the position that we forget about the person that we forget about the individual how they how they how they feel um how they think um, um, um how they hope how they get disappointed and and oftentimes what happens we become uh, we become desensitized we become desensitized to the other person's feelings because we're so caught up in the, the things that we're doing where everything is mechanical and so we get caught up into the roles where we get so caught up into the roles that the roles it removes um, compassion it removes intimacy and that's also one of the ways that the enemy the, the devil the adversary can get in and can destroy and come into a home uh, the Bible God says to to, to um, what I put together no let no one separate the separation is when you allow things to get in between your communication when you allow things to get in between your conversation, to get in between your connection. When you allow things to get in between your connection, your intimacy, then it, it becomes an enemy. 
anything that comes between your enemy, anything that comes between your union of coming together and being fruitful and, and, and multiplying in which God had commanded you to do, it becomes an enemy. Anything that tries to come in between what God has put together, it doesn't matter whether it could be your mama, it could be your sister, it could be your, your brother, it could be your kids. Whatever it is, it's out of the will and, and, and it's, it's out of the will. It's out of the will. And, and it's not the spirit of God. I'll put it that way. Not, not God's spirit. See, because God brings together. The enemy is the one that divides. Anytime, anytime there's something that's trying to divide you from, from, from your union, anything that's trying to divide you from what doing what's right and, 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 and living how and living right, then it's not of God, it's a demon. It, it's something that's trying to pervert, divert. It's, it, it's the prince of Persia. It's a spirit. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an enemy, the adversary, and on assignment that's trying to divert. That's what the enemy does. The enemy, by any means necessary, his purpose is to divert you, to distract you, to get you to a place where you lose traction, where you lose focus, you lose your, your stability, where you lose your foundation. That's what he's after for you to lose the principle, the spirit, the understanding behind the foundation, the foundation of why, why you do what you do. And so the enemy is after your God. He's after your faith. And so that's why it's so important to constantly, to constantly, to constantly strengthen your faith, to build your faith, to grow your faith. Uh, and, and the way you grow your faith is by having an intimate relationship with God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how you get the faith. The faith comes with hearing. And not just hearing, but applying. The Bible also say, faith without works is dead. See, there's two types of faith. There's dead faith and there's lively faith. The dead faith is the faith that you get it. God give every man a measure of faith, but you don't do nothing with it. Just sit and talk and gossip. And just think about tough stuff you want to do, but you never do it. That's dead faith. But lively faith is the faith that's tried by fire. And see, because God, see, see, because after you try it by fire, then you're going to come forth and you're going to come through as pure gold. You need to know that with whatever kind of fire that might be flaming at you and trying to come up against you, to know that the faith, if you hold on, if you hold on to God and you hold on to the, to the truth, if you hold on to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and what God has told you, that is so. If you hold hold on to what God has said, then He's going to see you through, and He's going to cause the victory to come into your life. Hear what I'm saying? God is great. He is great, and He's worthy to be praised. And His praise and His greatness comes. When you keep his word and you keep his name in your mouth. Because when you keep his word and your name in your mouth, then greatness is going to come from your mouth. Greatness is going to come from your life. Greatness is going to come from your talk. Hear what I'm saying. God bless you.